Nathan in Bellflower, California. Hi, my question is, um, even though I study theology and apologetics, and I, I love it, um, I just want to know who put the Bible together and the books, who chose those books to go in the way they are? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, some of it's fairly self-evident. And let me uh, start by just giving you a little analogy. Uh, if you look at certain Gospels that are oftentimes considered to be Gospels that were left out, um, and you read them, you immediately realize why they are left out. So, for example, over the last uh, decade or so, a Gospel that's gotten a lot of press is the Gospel of Judas. And it's supposed to be uh, far, far superior to the Gospel of John. And so there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, what do you call it, static on the web about this and, and so forth. So one day, and this has been quite a while ago, one day I decided to pick up the Gospel of Judas, and along with a colleague who's worked with me almost 28 years, we sat in my office and read the 13 papyrus pages. And when we got done, we were on the floor laughing. Laughing because of the absurdity of the gospel of Judas. In other words, people talk about it in glowing terms, but when you actually read it, you see the difference between that and the literary masterpiece that we call the gospel of John or even the five books of John, including his epistles in the book of Revelation. But I think the more fundamental answer to your question is that the books that we have in our canon were the books that were used in the early Christian church. Obviously, Jesus giving ratification to the Old Testament canon, but with respect to the New Testament canon, These are books that were widely distributed and read prolifically in the early Christian church. They were letters. And those letters were not letters that were determined by men to be canonical or part of the canon of Scripture, but rather discovered to be canonical based on principles of canonicity, meaning A canon is a measuring rod or a stick by which you measure. And so there are principles associated with that measure. And these books fall in line with those principles, including the principle of perspicuity, meaning that the books are clear and consistent, not only within themselves, but amongst themselves. Uh, So, again, I think maybe the operative way of saying this is this is not human beings determining, but human beings discovering. Yeah, but who was it that put them, even though what I've read, like, like let's say um, Job is the oldest book, right? Um, Who put them together and the way they are? Who... um, I mean, it wasn't well, when you're talking church. about the Old Testament, I mean, that canon was established early on. And I think you're right when you say Job is likely the oldest book in the Old Testament. Um, but that canon was ratified by Christ and the apostles prior to the time that the New Testament canon came into existence. I mean, there was a long time when there was no such thing as a New Testament canon. Uh, so the New Testament canon came into existence over time. Uh, but but the practices of the early Christian church have been perpetuated to this day uh, through Christ, through the apostles, uh, through the early church fathers, uh, fathers like Ignatius of Antioch, and later through the early New Testament catechism, uh, a first, second century document, um, and, and, and so on the basis of the tradition that has been passed down from Christ to the apostles to the church fathers, we also have a tradition whereby we know what was used, what was circulated in the early Christian church. 